Hey friends, it's Amber from Gear Glasses and Gadgets, and today we're going to be talking to you about three ultra portable Sony cameras for vacationers and people on the go. The British are coming! The oldest European town in Indiana, Vincennes, was officially established in 1732 as a second French fur trading post in this area. The Spirit of Vincennes Rendezvous is a revolutionary battle reenactment held annually on Memorial Day weekend. The event celebrates the capture of Fort Sackville in 1779. During the Revolutionary War, the colonists often had to bluff their way to victory. That's what happened in 1779 in Vincennes, Indiana. The battle was over the capture of Fort Sackville. In his mid-twenties, Lieutenant Colonel George Rogers Clark led the colonial forces. Clark had only 200 buckskin pioneers as troops, but he had his men raise enough flags for 600. Believing himself overwhelmed by so many troops, the British Lieutenant Governor Henry Hamilton surrendered the fort. If Hamilton had called Clark's bluff, things may have turned out differently. The three cameras that we're going to be talking about today are amazing in their own respects, but they vary quite drastically. The first one is the ultra-portable Sony RX100 Mark IV. It's a pocket-sized camera, but it's a huge powerhouse. The second one is the RX10 Mark II. It has the 24 to 200 millimeter lens that is a constant 2.8 all the way through. And then the third, of course, is the A6300, which has interchangeable lenses and the world's fastest focusing system. Huh? We wanted to test out these ultra portable cameras because Whenever we're on vacation or at family functions, we don't want to be seen as the professional photographer or filmmaker. We just want to blend in and get natural reactions. So we really wanted to see which of these three cameras fit our needs the most. Out of the three cameras we are talking about today, this tiny little thing is probably my favorite. It's so small, it will fit in your pocket. And not only that, it has selfie mode. Who doesn't love that? This camera does have a pop-up viewfinder, which is really cool, but I did find myself using the screen a lot more often. It's just a little more convenient for me. Now with this camera, you have a 24 to 70 focal length, so it's not quite wide and it's not really that tight. You do have the ability to use clear image zoom, so that's gonna get you a little bit closer, but it doesn't have quite the range of focal distance as the other ones, the other two cameras do, but I really personally like this camera. Um, the 24 to 70 doesn't bother me at all. I, I really love this camera. It's probably my personal favorite. During our testing of this camera at the rendezvous, one of my favorite selfies I accidentally overexposed because with my sunglasses on and I was kind of in a hurry, accidentally overexposed it. But with the dynamic range of this camera, I was able to bring back the image and I just absolutely love this one. It's one of my favorites.
I hate bugs. The second camera we're gonna be talking about is the Sony RX10 Mark II. It has amazing video features and a 24 to 200 lens, which makes that great for capturing those incognito like reaction shots where no one knows that you're shooting them. The RX10 Mark II is a great filmmaker's camera. It has the 24 to 200 millimeter lens that is a constant 2.8 all the way through. You can also pop it into clear image zoom and get even closer and not lose any image quality. This camera does feature the flip out screen, which is great for video. And it also shoots in 4K. One thing that we really like about it is that it has the high frame rate. So whenever we're out on vacation or here at the rendezvous, we can shoot in the high frame rate and get some really cool ultra slow motion video clips. As with all of your cameras, make sure you have the current firmware updated on this RX10 Mark II. There was a glitch with the focusing in high frame rate mode, but with the latest firmware, it's totally fixed and you should not have a problem with it. As filmmakers, we love the fact that this has a 2.8 constant aperture all the way through the 24 to 200. It also has built-in ND filters, which are great for video. Although we are primarily filmmakers, we do like to take photos as well, so make sure to check out the link in the description box to see some of the photography images that we were able to capture. One thing to keep in mind about the high frame rate mode though, which we find a little clunky, is you have to go into high frame rate mode on the dial, then get all of your settings set up, then go into standby mode, then you can start recording. So it's a few extra steps that we wish weren't there, but you're getting an amazing slow motion uh, video out of the small package. Another thing to keep in mind about high frame rate on this camera is that you get two seconds of the super slow motion. That may not seem like a lot, but that equals out to 20 seconds of actual footage, which is really more than enough footage whenever you're doing super slow motion. Now you're probably wondering, how in the heck am I going to choose what two seconds to record? We like to use the reverse trigger mode. What we do is we get the camera set up, wait for something really cool to happen, and then after it happens, hit record, and it's going to record the previous two seconds. Overall, we found the high frame rate, 240 frames per second, very fun to use, and it gave us some really cool uh, video clips. Oh yeah, Dude, you should hear some of the weird questions we get. One time I had someone ask me like, do you guys use real bullets? And I go, well, if we did, we'd run out of reenactment yeah. real fast. <laughs> Not a good idea. Yeah. So now we're gonna talk about the Sony a6300. Now, it's no surprise that we absolutely love this camera. We've already done a video for weddings with it, which we will link to below. But for vacation and travel, it's also great as well because it is so small. Now, it has the fastest focusing system for photography and we just love that you can pull it out and nail your focus in your shots every single time. Now one of the great things we do love about this camera personally is that you can have interchangeable lenses. Um, so with this Zeiss 24 to 70, it's going to be a little bit bigger, but you can get a small like pancake lens or kit lens to go with it. And it will also be very ultra portable. Now this camera, unlike the other two we've talked about today, does not have image stabilization. So um, you might want to get either a lens that has image stabilization or like a gorilla pod whenever you're on vacation. Unlike the other two cameras we've talked about, this camera does not have the super high frame rate of 240 and above. This does, however, however, have 120 frames per second, so it will have some slow motion, but not quite as much as the other two. Again, it's probably no surprise to you that the a6300 made it in this video. We absolutely love this camera and have already done two reviews on it, so we will put the links to those in the description box below. All three of the cameras we're talking about today are really great vacation cameras. I don't think that there's one that's really better than the other. You just have to choose the right one for you and for your needs. I hope you all learned a little history maybe today, a little something about the cameras, and I just hope you all have an amazing summer. Get out the sunscreen, of course, and um, just have fun shooting. Again, as always, thank you so much for watching, and LLAP, friends.